Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us for the Aquarium Online Academy. I'm coming to you from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California, and I'm Stacy. We're gonna hang out together with our special co-host, Captain Joe, to explore the world of seals and sea lions today. So if you have any questions or you'd like to share any thoughts, please text us. We actually have a number right here, 562-286. 1838. Again, it's 562 286 1838. Now, for our younger audience, please make sure that you do ask for permission before you text, as texting rates may apply. All right. So, I hope that you're ready to explore with Captain Joe. We're going to become scientists to make some observations to learn more about seals and sea lions. So, let's check in with Captain Joe to see what he's up to. Hello everyone, welcome to our seal and sea lion habitat. Today we're here to investigate the differences between these two very special marine mammals. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Hey Joe, that sounds great. Maybe you can show us some video too. For one thing, if you take a look at this sea lion, you can see that he has big flippers both in front and back. For another difference, look closely at the sides of the head. You see those? Those are ear flaps. Sea lions have external ear flaps just like us. Now take a look at this harbor seal, and do you see any differences? Little stubby flippers in the back, little stubby paws in the front, and look at the side of its head. No ear flaps. Seals do have ears, but the only thing they have to show for it on the outside are these little holes on the side of their head. No ear flaps for them. Oh man, that was excellent. So that was some really good footage of both seals and sea lions. Now here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we have California sea lions and harbor seals. And so I have um, some plush animals here to help us review what Captain Joe just shared with us. So first we looked at California sea lions. California sea lions have very long front flippers and they have outside ear flaps. Look at that. We actually have outside ear flaps too. That means we're kind of like the California sea lion. Now, most sea lions out there have these outside ear flaps and those long flippers. Harbor seals are like a lot of other seals. Their flippers are kind of tiny in the front and they have a very smooth head. In fact, you don't even really know where their ear is unless you can look closely and see the little hole. Now, both animals have ears on the inside of their heads, just like we do. We have an outside part to our ear and an inside part too. They both have inside parts, but harbor seals don't have the outside part to their ear. They don't have that external ear flap. All right, well, I think Captain Joe has some more thoughts for us, some more observations. So let's check back in with him. All right, cadets. As part of every ocean ranger's training, we must all learn the majestic call of the California sea lion. Ready? Here we go. And now, the harbor seal. Um, Captain Joe, we didn't hear the seal call. Well, that is because the harbor seal is stealthy and quiet. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Uh, can you tell about their natural environment? Well, of course. Great. Sea lions tend to hunt in shallow water, both out in the open and in our local kelp forest, eating many different kinds of fish and squid, and they can hold their breath for about nine minutes. Now, seals, on the other hand, Although they enjoy those fish and squid, they also enjoy crab and shrimp on the bottom of the ocean floor, and they can hold their breaths for up to 30 minutes. Wow, that's really cool. So seals and sea lions in their natural habitat kind of have a little bit of different lives. They live in a very similar place, a place called a kelp forest. And, um, and because they live in a similar place, there's some things they have in common. 
but they eat very different things. And that's one of the reasons why they can hold their breath for a different amount of time. Sea lions typically eat things that are swimming in the water, like little fish or maybe squid. And that's why they don't hold their breath for quite as long, right? But a seal, on the other hand, seals like to eat things that live on the bottom of the ocean. So they'll eat fish and squid too, but they also eat things that they find on the bottom, like crabs. And that's one reason why they have to hold their breath a little longer, so that way they can dive all the way down to the bottom to capture their food. Now, seals and sea lions both have to breathe air, so holding their breath is really important when they're living in the ocean. Now, behind me here, this is what we call our blue cavern exhibit. This is a really good example of what a kelp forest looks like. So, we can see all this really cool seaweed. This seaweed is called giant kelp, and that's what makes up this forest and kind of is the basis for the whole habitat. The kelp is necessary to start this food chain that you have, or food web even, that you have here in a kelp forest habitat. What else do you notice about this habitat? So seals and sea lions can be found in a habitat like this. We don't have them in our blue cavern exhibit, but they would be living in a habitat like this in the ocean. Do you see all those fish? That's right, there's lots and lots of different fish that you're going to find in a kelp forest habitat too. What's really cool is there's even more invertebrates, animals with no backbone. That would be like a slug, a snail, a crab, all of those animals. Oh, sea stars too. They all live here in a kelp forest. And they're basically neighbors for seals and sea lions. So now that we know um, about them holding their breath, what about those sounds? Do you remember what a California sea lion sounded like? Yeah, they kind of bark, right? Whereas the harbor seal, did you hear it? I didn't hear it. Captain Joe said that he did a good example, but I didn't hear it. And that's because harbor seals are a little bit on the quieter side. And so it's really tough to be able to hear them. And that's okay too. So they even sound a little bit different from each other. Very cool. All right, uh, it looks like we have a question here. Um, is that why you see a lot of them in tide pools? Oh, I'm wondering if you're asking if our seals and sea lions are hanging out in the tide pools. Um, they don't tend to be in the tide pool exactly. It's a little bit kind of rocky and tough to maneuver around, but they are very close to them. In fact, a lot of seals and sea lions hang out on the beach. And when they hang out on the beach, it gives them a chance to rest a little bit. Now, there are, um, there are predators in the ocean that they may want to get away from and have a chance to rest, like this little seal right here. Another thing, too, is this is a great way to just relax, right? You don't have to swim in the ocean. You don't have to worry about breathing. You get to just hang out on a rock or on a beach and relax like a sausage. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right. So that is why we see them a lot of times out of the water. And yes, they can actually come out of the water. All right. I think we've had Captain Joe waiting for a while. Why don't we, uh, why don't we get in touch with him again and see what else he has to share with us? Hey, Captain Joe. Um, can you tell us more about the aquariums, pinnipeds, seals, and sea lions? What a great question. I know quite a few people that work here with our seals and sea lions. Let's uh -huh. go ahead and go ask them. What do you say? I love that idea. Okay, great. So um, it sounds like, thanks, Captain Joe. <laughs> All right, it sounds like Captain Joe is actually going to talk to some experts, some people who work with our seals and sea lions to look at how we care for them here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. So that's pretty great. Now, while he's doing that, it may take him a few minutes. Let's play a puzzle together. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a picture up here behind me, but I won't show you all of the picture. We're just going to show you little parts of the picture. Your job is to make some observations, to look very carefully and see if you can figure out what animal is in the picture. Now, if you know what animal is in the picture, we would love for you to share that with us with our text number. So remember, not only um, can you just text questions to us, but you can also text us your thoughts, your ideas, and your answers. So that phone number is right down there again, 562-286-1838. All right, let's get started with our puzzle. Oh, 
Okay, so we have a lot of pieces here, but what I notice a lot of is blue. There's a lot of blue in this picture. Hmm, what does that tell us about where the animal lives? Well, I would say with the blue, it's either living in the sky or in the ocean. <laughs> but since we're at the aquarium, it must be in the ocean, right? Must be in the water. I don't see very much down here. So maybe this is an animal that's good at swimming, perhaps? What are some other things that you notice? What are some of the colors you might see? Let's see, I see some browns, some yellows, maybe even some green, okay? Now, can we see anything else that can give us a hint of what this animal might be? Now, it sounds like we have a whole bunch of people texting in sea turtle. Very nice. <laughs> And uh, so many of you, we can't really keep up. So excellent. Thank you so much for texting in, everybody. Let's check and see. Aha, you're correct. Yes, definitely a sea turtle. Now, what gave it away? What did you see that made you know that it was a sea turtle? One of the things that I noticed was this cool thing on its back here. Do you know what that is? It's a shell. Do you know why they have a shell? What is a shell good for, for a sea turtle? Because a shell is incredibly helpful. It's an adaptation, something that it has to help it survive. Well, the shell is really great protection. That protection is really good if there are predators out there. So take a look at that beautiful shell. So very good protection. Now, another thing that it's uh, kind of amazing about this shell is the shape of it. Do you notice it's kind of flat and slim? Take a look at that. That is actually a really good thing for the turtle because it needs to swim in the water. So that shell being flat helps it to swim in the water a little bit easier. If it was a big round shell, like their cousins on land, the tortoises, it would be harder for them to swim. It would take more energy for them to swim. Okay, since we're talking about swimming, how did that turtle swim in the water? What did it use? Did it use its little back feet? No, the back feet drift along with it, right? It used its big front flippers and those big front flippers are like paddles for them to paddle through the water. Now I'm gonna get out of the way here so you can take a really good look at this turtle here. What is that turtle doing? It's slow-mo swimming. I think that's what it's doing. <laughs> Take a look at that giant paddle flipper in the front. So that's how it's going to push itself through the water. Excellent. <laughs> oh man, that's very relaxing. Thank you, little turtle. Now we have a couple of questions coming in here. So I want to make sure I get a chance to answer your questions and then we'll go check in with Captain Joe again. So Nora, age seven from New York is asking, why don't sea lions eat kelp? And what is kelp made of? That's a really good question. So kelp, let's start there. Kelp is a kind of seaweed and it's kind of, uh, it's actually an algae. So seaweed and algae is basically the same thing. Um, and it's in that way, it's like a plant. So if you think about a plant, right? A plant um, can just kind of soak up the sun and it needs water and nutrients from its roots. And, and then the, um, and, carbon dioxide from the air. And when it has all of those things together, it makes its own food, right? And that's why it's kind of the start of a lot of food chains. Well, in um, a kelp forest like this, this kelp does the same kind of thing. Instead of having roots, because it doesn't need roots, it can actually get things straight from the water. So all of the nutrients that are floating around in the water, all of the carbon dioxide that it needs, it's just floating around in the water. So what it really needs is that sunlight from above. And when it has all of that, it can make its own food. Now, it seems like a really great thing to eat, right? There seems to be a lot of it. It actually grows really fast too. But seals and sea lions are carnivores. What is a carnivore? It's an animal that eats meat. That's right. And it, uh, seals and sea lions love seafood. So they're really going to be going after things like fish and squid. And then for those seals, those crabs and everything too. So great question. Um, but they definitely have their preferred diet. One way that we know that is because of their teeth. So they have perfect teeth for being able to catch um, seafood, but not really great teeth for chomping up and chewing up kelp. 
All right. So let's see. Um, I actually have, ah, uh, very cool, a sea lion skull here. Now, this one is a model, so it's made of plastic, but it gives us a good idea of what it looks like. Take a look at those teeth. Again, great teeth for being able to catch fish, not very good for chewing up kelp. All right. Great question, Nora. Thank you. We have uh, Fernando asking, do sea lions like shrimp or crab? Well, uh, sea lions, they tend to really eat fish more than anything, um, but seals do like to eat shrimp and crab. I bet you that if we fed our sea lions some shrimp, they might eat it. They don't really um, chew on things too much. They actually catch the food with their teeth and then they just swallow it. So um, I don't know if they'd even taste it <laughs> so much. But um, so I think if we were to give our seals and sea lions uh, shrimp and crab, they'd eat it. But in their natural habitat, sea lions don't go after those animals too much. All right. We have um, some really great footage here of our seals and sea lions. And oh, look at this. What is that one? Okay, so we learned about seals and sea lions, right? Is this one a seal or a sea lion? Well, easy thing to do is to look for its ears. Do you see its ears? Right there. And it's not a little flap like ours, right? It's just a hole. This is a seal. In fact, this is one of our harbor seals. I think it's actually our young one, Kaya. Um, and I think she's only a couple years old. So she's, she's definitely our youngest one here. And she is uh, just about to eat some little fish here that her trainer has for her. So you can see they definitely do eat fish as well. Now we have uh, Vashti asking, which animals eat kelp? Oh, good question. Since seals and sea lions don't do it, who does? Well, there's uh, several animals that eat kelp. There's some fish that might eat kelp. There's some crabs that might eat kelp. But uh, there's also an animal called a sea urchin. Sea urchins are big time kelp eaters. A sea urchin's a really cool animal. It's like a big circle with lots of spikes. Waha! There we go. This sea urchin is an animal that lives on the bottom of the ocean right? There's no fin, so it's not a good swimmer. And it crawls around on the ocean floor looking for kelp to eat. And um, if you look here, do you, can you see its mouth? I don't see a mouth from this view. And that's because urchin mouths are underneath in the bottom in the middle. So they have to climb on top of kelp and then their mouth is like five little scrapey teeth. And those scrapey teeth can scrape and eat up all that kelp. Another really cool kelp eater is one of my favorite animals. It's a very charismatic snail. Oh, cool. So this is the urchin mouth. Um, so you can see here that big circle. That's its mouth. Now, they're not super big. The purple ones tend to be maybe about this big at the biggest. Um, but this one looks huge and kind of crazy. But they're really not that big. This is just really close up. Um, okay, so again, that charismatic snail, one of my favorite animals in a kelp forest. It's actually a snail called an abalone. And an abalone is a snail that's soft and squishy, and it has a shell that just sits right on top like a hat. And they also hang out on the ocean floor. They're not swimmers either. And they cruise around looking for algae and other seaweeds to eat. Now, do you see any abalone in here? Remember, a snail with a shell like a hat. Well, there's actually a bunch in here. They just look like rocks. So here's one here and here and here and here. There's one right there. And look at this right here. There's another one right there. Oh, here's one right here. There's a lot of them. This here is one of the exhibits at the aquarium, and we have lots of abalone. Now, there's a, a few different kinds here in California. Um, the ones that we have here at the aquarium are also from California, right off our coast here. And this one right here is called a red abalone, and this one is a white abalone. And they're both, their populations aren't super great out there in the ocean, but the white abalone that one is endangered. Now we have a really cool program here where we are breeding them because we want to have lots and lots of babies here that we can actually put into the ocean. So that's one of the projects that we're doing here at the aquarium. Now this is what an abalone shell kind of looks like. Now out in the ocean, it can actually have lots of things covering it to help it hide even better. But look at the underside. Isn't it pretty? 
It's shiny. And in the right light, it even looks like a rainbow. So uh, abalone are really interesting snails. They're super cute too for a snail. <laughs> and um, their shells are really incredible. So that is another kelp eater. Thank you so much, Vashti, for that question. We have Nora asking, do seals or sea lions bite? Oh, well, anything with the mouth can bite like me. <laughs> it doesn't mean that we do, right? Seals and sea lions tend not to bite anything except for their food or maybe if they're trying to stay protected from a predator and they have to fight back, they might do that. But anything with a mouth can bite. So good question. All right. I think that we've uh, had Captain Joe waiting for a while. Hopefully he's still with that expert. Let's check in with him and see what he's found. All right. Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back. I'm here with my friend Jimmy. He's a mammologist taking care of our sea lions, seals, and also our sea otters. And we have our special guest, Parker, here with us today. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Wave hi, Parker. Say hi. Good boy. We're going to talk about our training. We train these animals so that we, they can participate in their health care. We can ask them to open their mouths. We can target and move our fingers over their eyes when we give them eye drops. We also want them to be physically fit and want them to think about the behavior. So when Parker sticks out his tongue at everybody like he's getting ready to do, tongue, tongue, good. Yeah. I say good. And then he gets excited because he knows he's going to get a fish. That's herring. Then we have capelin and we also have squid. So he's very focused on the bucket because he knows he's going to get what we call a reward. If you guys do something good, you may get a quarter. Um, if Joe's going to be good, I might buy him lunch after we do this. Yeah. Thing. But the training is really important because we want them to be comfortable with us. Good. Good boy. So there's a variety of behaviors that we do train them. Salute. Good. Good boy. So we ask for the behavior either verbally with our mouths or we do a hand signal. And so Joe's going to do a hand signal. He's going to get his right uh, hand and point to his ear. Look at Parker and point to your ear. Good boy. All right. And now if you get your right hand and shake your index finger back and forth, he's going to do a no. Do a Parker. Good. Good boy. Now stick your right thumb out. Good. Good boy. Good. Now look over there and give, give him a kiss. Give Joe a kiss. Give Joe a kiss. Hey, come here. Parker, give me a big smooch. Thanks, Good. buddy. Good boy. Good job. So that's just a little bit about our training and having him sit here for the whole time that we're filming is a really good experience for him. And now, since he did so good, I'm going to have him um, lift up, do an away bye or wave, say bye. You want to dance? Dance for him a little bit, do some behaviors. Nice. Lift it up. Lift it up. Good boy. Now we're going to do a jackpot, meaning he did everything I wanted him to do. So I'm going to go back in the exhibit and give him all of his fish all at once. Awesome. Have a good day. See you later. Thank you so much, Jimmy. You're Thank welcome. you so much, bye. Parker. Say bye. Good boy. Let's go. What an awesome time with Parker, our California sea lion. Boys and girls, we're going to send it back to you at the studio. Oh my gosh, that was incredible. So it was really neat to be able to see that training up close. Thank you so much, Jimmy, Parker, and Captain Joe for helping us with that. Excellent. All right, now we have a couple questions here. Sienna asking, how many types of seals are there? Well, there are 18 true seals and there are 33 different kinds of pinniped. So a pinniped is an animal like a seal, a sea lion, and a walrus. So those animals all together, there are about 33 different kinds, but a true seal, 18. We have Fernanda from LA asking, can you pet a seal? Oh my goodness, look at that cute little seal face. They sure look like it would be pretty fun to pet, right? Well, seals and sea lions are wild animals, so it's not something that you would want to go do. My recommendation is don't just go and pet a seal or a sea lion. Plus, there's actually an, uh, a law that protects them, so that way they stay protected from people of all different kinds. So um, that law is, is put in place so that people cannot get close to them. So it's actually not a good idea for your safety, but also because the law says, don't go close to seals and sea lions. Now here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, like this little <laughs> seal here, they're actually trained just like what um, you saw Jimmy doing. And so those seals and sea lions get to know
know their trainers and they trust their trainers. So we're able to touch them as part of their health care because one of the things that we need to be able to do is help them if they get an injury. We have to be able to look at them very closely. And part of that is actually feeling their body to make sure that they don't have any bumps. So they do get touched by, um, by their trainers, not as much like pet, like you would pet a dog, but this is all part of how we can make sure that they are well taken care of and they get all the health care that they need. We can even ask them to open their mouth to look at their teeth. So it's a pretty cool thing, a pretty cool training program that we have here to make sure that our animals stay nice and healthy. Abigail asked, how long do seals and sea lions live? Well, in general, seals and sea lions live about 20 to 30 years or so. It does depend on the kind of seal or sea lion though. So, but it's about 20 to 30 years. Um, let's see, we have another question here is kelp poisonous? Kelp is actually not poisonous. Um, kelp is something that we even eat, people can eat. Now, if you go to the store and you buy those sheets of seaweed snacks that are nice and salty and crispy, that's not kelp. It's a different kind of seaweed, but people do actually eat giant kelp. Um, it just is kind of in a different form. Tracy asked, where do seals and sea lions sleep at night? Oh, that's a really good question. Now, a lot of seals and sea lions will, um, at least I think in California, actually haul out, which means they go up onto the beach, onto rocks, onto um, big buoys that are floating in the water. So they do actually come up and out of the water at night in order to sleep like that sausage. <laughs> All right, uh, what temperature of water is best for a sea turtle habitat? And this question is from the Holy Spirit School in LA. Well, um, it depends on the kind of sea turtle. So uh, there are, oh, how many different types of sea turtles? I think there are seven different kinds of sea turtles out there. And a lot of them are found in slightly warmer waters. And one of the reasons is because they are reptiles. And just like other reptiles, like snakes and lizards, um, they need warmth in order to be warm enough to be able to move. So the warmer they are, the easier it is for them to move. Of course, they can get too warm too. So, um, so typically speaking, you're going to find sea turtles in the warmer tropical waters. However, we do see sea turtles down here in Long Beach. Um, and so our water is not tropical. It's not super cold either. It's kind of that in-between called temperate. And we do see sea turtles around here, especially green sea turtles. Um, this is our tropical exhibit, and we do have a turtle living in here. It looks like it is elusive right now, which means we can't quite see it. Um, one of our sea turtles does live in here. And again, this is pretty warm water. This is um, in the 70s, probably mid to upper 70s even. All right. Um, what animals eat seals? Angela is asking that question. Um, the animals that eat seals tend to be things like big sharks, like a, um, like a great white shark or even an orca. So there are definitely animals that eat seals and sea lions, but they tend to be much bigger animals like this orca whale here. And Michaela is asking, how big do sea lions get? Well, the California sea lion can be um, up over 800 pounds. So it typically is the boys that do get big because for California sea lions, the males get much bigger than the females. The females are a little bit on the smaller side. Um, so it, it, they can be well over 800 pounds. And those, again, are the California sea lions. All right. Uh, so I think that we might have a few more questions coming in. Um, so, oh, here they are. <laughs> All right. Alex is asking, do sea urchins make good pets? Um, you know, that's a really good question. I think sea urchins are pretty cool to watch and they're really interesting. Um, it depends on what you want in a pet. I, I don't think they're the most cuddly pet out there. <laughs> and you would definitely need to have um, a, a fish tank that can handle a sea urchin pet like this. Now, there are some people out there that do have sea urchins as pets. I don't think it's an animal that you want to pet like this, but watching them is really fun, especially when they walk around and all those, those long things that you see here, 
Those are their feet. They have so many feet and those kind of sway around a little bit. Um, so I think that's a really fun question, actually. Um, they're, they're pretty cool to watch though. And Richie asked, um, what eats a sea urchin? Good question. So um, one of the, let's see, in Southern California, it tends to be a big fish called a sheephead um, or lobsters. They also eat sea urchins. Just imagine trying to eat that pokey pokey animal, right? So there's not very many um, other animals that can eat them. They have to get past all those spikes. Now, not here in uh, the Long Beach area, but a little further north in California, we have a very cute little animal that is a very good sea urchin eater. And one of the reasons why is because it's very intelligent and it can even use tools. Do you happen to know what that is? Cute, fluffy, smart, lives in the ocean? Ha ha, it's a sea otter. That's right, these southern sea otters are really good at eating urchins. In fact, some sea, sea excuse me, sea otters eat so many sea urchins that their teeth turn purple. Just like if you were to eat like a red popsicle and your mouth turns kind of red, kind of like that. So um, they're so smart that they're able to crack into a sea urchin without getting poked by all those spines. Their teeth are also really, really well designed to crack into a sea urchin to get past the spines. Now, when we looked at the sea urchin, the top spines were really long, the bottom spines are shorter. So it's easier to, if you're gonna eat an urchin, to get to those bottom spines. So you have to be able to pull it up a rock and then you can um, crack it open to eat the insides. That's really what they're going to go after. Let's see, a few more questions here. Um, Maley is asking, do animals feed off of seals or sea lions? Oh yes, we answered that, right? So there are a few animals out there that do eat seals and sea lions, and that would be the really big animals, really big carnivores, like the orca whales or, um, or the uh, great white sharks. And Nora asked, what are the whiskers for? Oh my gosh, whiskers are awesome. Whiskers in general, for all kinds of different animal, is perfect for sensing their surroundings. So if you look at any animal with whiskers, those whiskers help them to, um, to feel things around them, especially if you live in the ocean and you are hunting what if the water is a little bit tough to see through? What if there's, it's kind of murky, there's a lot of stuff in the water. These long whiskers actually can touch the bottom of the ocean and can feel around. So it helps them to kind of navigate. It, they'll be able to tell if there's a big rock there, even if they can't see it super duper well. Um, it might even help them to find food too. So those whiskers are perfect for sensing their surroundings. Okay, so we have a handful of last questions. I know we are over on time, so I'm going to answer these ones. If we don't get to your questions, please still send them in because we can still text you back or even email you back if, um, if you email in some questions as well. Okay, so Sienna asks, do urchins eat fish? Ah, urchins tend to be herbivores. <laughs> Hi, little seal. So urchins tend to eat that kelp or other types of seaweeds. However, if they come across somebody's leftovers, they might munch on that a little bit, but they're not going to go hunting for fish. Alvin wants to know if urchins walk. Yeah, did you remember all those feet, right? All those long um, feet that I was talking about? Not only are they up here, but there's a bunch underneath it too. And those feet are what help them to walk. So they do walk on the ocean floor in a kelp forest like this. Madeline in Corona wants to know, do sea lions swim in packs or alone? And it really depends on the sea lion. Most sea lions, especially California sea lions, do hang out together. Um, they kind of hang out together uh, for protection probably. Also, they're pretty social. Um, and a lot of times you're going to get one big male with a bunch of um, females, a bunch of the girls, and some young ones too. But there are some California sea lions do, that do hang out by themselves, and they tend to be um, males, and they tend to kind of chill on their own. Oh, and then the other ones join them. So, um, so they're not always found by themselves. They are often found together with others. 
All right, everybody. I do want to say thank you so much for joining our program today to learn about seals and sea lions. And I want a, a special thank you to Captain Joe out there who helped us with our exploration today. Now, if you do have more questions that you are wondering, like if you caught this recorded and you want to know more, please email us. Our email address is live at lbaop.org. Again, that's live, L-I-V-E at lb. AOP.org. All right, we have a few more classes today, and we have um, more uh, for the next couple of days too this week. So hopefully you're able to join us again. Thanks so much. Bye bye.